What do retroactive jealousy sufferers and drug addicts have in common? The answer might surprise you, and that's exactly what I'm going to go into in today's video. My name is Zachary Stockhill, and since 2013, I've been helping men and women from all over the world overcome retroactive jealousy and save their relationships. If you'd like to work with me one-on-one, please visit my website at retroactivejealousy.com. For the people here for the first time, the term retroactive jealousy refers to unwanted intrusive thoughts, often obsessive curiosity, and what I call mental movies about a partner's past relationships and or sexual history. It's pure hell, but if you found this video and you're watching this, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. And as I mentioned a moment ago, since 2013, I've been working pretty much full time on this issue of retroactive jealousy. As part of that work, I host a private Facebook group. It's a secret group, so you won't find it you know, publicly available on Facebook. A secret Facebook group for students taking my premium online course, Get Over Your Partner's Past Fast. As I sit here and record this today, we're over 500 members strong. There's always really interesting discussions in there. There's tons of people who've beat retroactive jealousy entirely. They just hang around to help others and to offer their insight and advice. One of the best things I've ever done in my professional life is create this secret Facebook group. And if you would like to join us, we would love to have you. I will ask my YouTube editor to put a card above my head with all the details about joining my private community and my premium online course, Get Over Your Partner's Past Fast. Anyway, I mention all that because not long ago, a student in this Facebook group left a brilliant comment that I just had to share with you. So the quote is from this student in my group. One thing I'd like to add, and I think it's something I've experienced, is that retroactive jealousy can be like an addiction. You get the adrenaline rush, then the reassurance and the feeling of calm. It's obviously not a pleasant experience and perhaps something that the sufferer isn't doing consciously, but it's important to replace that cycle with something. Otherwise, it's a possibility that it could continue." End quote. So I thought this was great and it helped articulate something that I've thought a lot about in terms of the similarities often between retroactive jealousy and drug addiction. So full disclosure, I'm not a drug addict. I have no personal experience with this, but I know a little bit about how drug addicts and how addiction functions. So there's this constant craving of a thing, you know, whether it's reassurance from our partner, whether it's details about our partner's past, whatever it is, there's this constant craving. Or for a drug addict, there's this constant craving for a drug, obviously. And then once we get that thing, so once we get the reassurance, once we get the details, whatever, we might feel better for a few hours, a day, a week, whatever. We might even feel euphoric. We might even hear something from our partner that just makes us feel great. We might get some clarification about something about their past and it just makes us feel wonderful. And for the drug addict, they might get that high. They might you know, do whatever drug that they're interested in. They might feel blissed out for a few hours, for a day or two or whatever. They'll feel great in that moment. But what comes after that high? What comes after that reassurance? What comes after that you know, feeling of satisfaction that we got the thing we wanted. Invariably, in the case of retroactive jealousy and drug addiction, there's going to be some kind of a crash and there's likely going to be a quick re-emergence of that same craving. And furthermore, that craving might return with a vengeance. We might be craving an even bigger reassurance from our partner. We might be craving even more details about our partner's past. And of course, unfortunately for the drug addict, they're always going to need a bigger and bigger, bigger high to match and even exceed the high that they just had. You get my point. Retroactive jealousy can often act like a drug addiction in that it's never going to be enough. Those cravings are gonna be so intense and ultimately they're never going to go away entirely until we choose a different course. And the more we keep giving into this cycle, so for example, if we want a certain reassurance from our partner and we've already heard that reassurance 10 times before but we want to hear even more, we want an even bigger reassurance. The more we keep giving into this cycle where we seek the reassurance from our partner, we hear what we think we want, we feel great, you know, the retroactive jealousy dissipates for a day or two or whatever, it's always going to return. Because by giving into our impulse of asking our partner more questions about their past and receiving the associated reward with that, so receiving the associated dopamine hit when we hear what we want to hear, we're making that cycle stronger, we're making that pattern even harder to break. And again, the same is true in many cycles of drug addiction, where every single time they give in to that, that addiction, that craving, it just strengthens the cycle, it strengthens the pattern that they need to break to get healthy. So you might think this is an extreme example, but I don't think it is really, because it functions very, very similarly, retroactive jealousy and many kinds of addiction. So it can be a useful insight 
for anyone watching this who's struggling with retroactive jealousy to ask yourself, am I addicted? And I don't mean literally physically addicted, but you get my point. You could be somewhat addicted to receiving endless details about your partner's past, receiving endless reassurances, getting those constant dopamine hits, getting that constant ego boosts with regards to how your partner sees you. Ask yourself if that doesn't sound familiar, the cycle that I just described. And realize that the more you keep buying into this cycle, the more you keep repeating this cycle, the harder it's going to be to break. And as I say endlessly on this channel, but it's so important, I can count exactly zero emails that I've received from retroactive jealousy sufferers that ever told me that asking their partner more questions about their partner's past you know, resulted in overcoming retroactive jealousy. In other words, seeking endless details about your partner's past Getting endless reassurance from your partner is not the way to overcome retroactive jealousy. This problem is not about how your partner sees their past. This not, problem is not necessarily about how you see your partner's past. This problem is about how you see yourself in many ways. And if you see yourself as one who gives into impulses, who's just helpless to you know, overcome those cravings, you're never going to overcome retroactive jealousy. So my advice would be seek out better patterns, start breaking those patterns as quickly as possible, stop giving into your weaker instincts, and things will start to change probably quicker than you realize right now. If you are struggling with retroactive jealousy and you want a fast, quick, and easy way to get started, I would love to help. I've created a free four-part video mini course designed specifically for retroactive jealousy sufferers who want help getting started. So if you sign up for this free course, you'll get four videos over the course of one week they're going to help you take the first baby steps towards total freedom from retroactive jealousy. The mini course is totally free. You can unsubscribe anytime. And if you want more details about that, hopefully my wonderful YouTube editor can put a card above my head. There will also be a link in the description of this video to receive a free four-part video mini course on how to get started overcoming retroactive jealousy. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. If you got anything out of this video, please take a moment to let me know by clicking the like button below. I'll also ask you to please leave a comment telling me what you think. And while you're at it, please be sure to subscribe to my channel to be notified of new videos moving forward. Thanks again, and I'll talk to you again soon.